morning folks, Dave Canterbury with the Pathfinder School. What I wanted to do today was, you can see I've got a box straight from the Pathfinder School with several packages in it here. What I wanted to do today was I kind of wanted to talk to you about the pocket hunting system. The pocket hunting system has recently been licensed to Marksman Slingshot for worldwide distribution. It's available in a lot of major sporting goods stores right now. In a lot of places online, you can type in Pocket Hunter and you can find it. The difference between the Pocket Hunter that was licensed to Marksman and the Pocket Hunter that's sold by the Pathfinder store is that the Pocket Hunter we licensed to Marksman does not have the fishing attachment and our fishing attachment may not fit their molded part. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in detail. But what I wanted to do today was I wanted to kind of go through the pocket hunter itself, talk about how to utilize the pocket hunter, talk about the accessories that are available, talk about how to load it, how to shoot it, different modifications that you can make to it with available accessories, and what you can use the pocket hunter for, and what it was actually meant to be used for compared to what you might think you can do with this pocket hunter. So let's just kind of break this stuff out. Like I said, this is all brand new, but you can go back. I'll put this in the video playlist on the pocket hunter. And you can go back and look at four or five videos in that series, and you'll see that I developed this system clear back in, it was either early 2009, late 2008, something like that. The first videos came out on this system as I developed it. We are now to the current patented design of the uh, Pocket Hunter, and we're going to talk about that a little bit as we go as well. So stay with me, guys. Okay, so let's first talk about what you receive with this Pocket Hunter when you order it from the Pathfinder School. And now this is the Deluxe Pathfinder Pocket Hunting Kit, I believe it's called on the Pathfinder website. And again, this stuff is brand new, but if you go back to my earlier videos that are in this playlist, I'll say this one more time, you will see this product in use from the very beginning in late 2008, early 2009. I'll also put some pictures and possibly a little bit of pieces of video at the end of this video that will show you the effectiveness of this tool for taking both small game, medium game, and fish. All right. And the reason I'm getting this stuff brand new for you guys is really because I want you to see what it looks like when you receive it in the package, not because I'm trying to do some kind of a review on something that I've been working with for five years. Deluxe Pathfinder Pocket Hunting System, and it has a list of what's included. The Pathfinder Slingshot, the Pocket Hunter Adapter and Spool with Cap, Modified Hunting Bands, one additional set of Modified Hunting Bands, and the Two Pocket Canvas Pouch. Now, it's important for you to understand in this video that the bands that are on our Pocket Hunter, these bands here, are not your normal everyday slingshot bands. We specially manufacture these bands to ensure that they are of a certain weight when drawn like a bow at a certain amount of inches of draw or pull. It works very much like a bow or any other piece of archery equipment. The further you draw it back, obviously the heavier the poundage is to its maximum. I have tested this on a scale. These hunting bands that come with the, with the Pocket Hunter Standard are 42 pounds at 28 inches. So this is very similar to shooting a 42 pound bow, long bow, recurve bow, compound bow, 42 pounds at 28 inches. Now, you get this multiple pocket pouch that's made out of canvas so you can put this on a belt if you want to. The way this was conceptualized in the beginning was so that you could take this system and fold it up and stick it in a cargo pocket. That's why it's called the Pocket Hunter. It is built on a standard Marksman wrist rocket slingshot. This is a heavy duty steel construction with a plastic handle slingshot. This is, even though they sell these in Walmart and places like that, these things are no toy. They will kill medium sized game without question, and I'll show you pictures to prove that, okay? There is a piece of paracord ran through the pocket, which is your arrow capturing device that captures the knock of your arrow. 
It comes standard with orange. You could put any color in here you wanted to. It has the standard 42 pound heavy duty hunting bands on it. And again, they're only 42 pounds if your draw is 28 inches. If your draw is less than 28 inches, it's not going to be 42 pounds. The adapter that comes on this device, the actual pocket hunting adapter, and this is the patented portion of this system, has a butterfly screw on the back side. It is reversible. So it can be put on this slingshot in either direction. It will only fit and is only molded to fit this marksman slingshot. So now I can use this thing as a regular slingshot if that's what I choose to do and shoot regular ball ammunition out of it. I can just take this piece of cord out of it, just got a knot tied in the end of it and use this as a regular slingshot that's going to be very powerful with ball type ammunition. The adapter itself is set up so that it can go on with the Pathfinder logo to the front or to the back. And the reason it's set up like that is because on the back side of this adapter there are two slots molded in. And those molded slots are what allow you to put a fishing reel attachment of sorts on this system. And basically that is a spool with a cap on it so that you can keep your string and other assorted accoutrements for bow fishing inside this. And then it simply snaps onto the adapter like this and locks on. So, and snaps off. It's just push on, push off. So what you'll do is you will take this adapter as it comes and you'll turn it around so that those slots are to the front. Just like this. It just snaps right on the front. And again, it's reversible. So you can put it on either way. It has a lock washer. Put your threaded thumb screw in and again it's designed with a thumb screw so you don't have to have any tools to mess with this and then you would put your fishing reel attachment on the front and snap it in and that contoured reel allows me to wrap line around the front of this loosely so that I can then shoot an arrow for fishing to use this at the water's edge and we'll talk more about that in a few minutes so let's take that off to begin with now it does not matter when you shoot this whether you have this adapter on front ways or back ways. In other words, if you've got the fishing attachment to the front or to the back, it doesn't matter. It's still going to shoot exactly the same. For sake of this demonstration, I'm going to put it on the other way only because the logo's on the front and that's the way it was designed to be displayed for sale. And that may be the way that you receive it, so I want to show it to you in the way you receive it. Again, that thumb screw just allows for easy assembly and disassembly without tools. So this is the way you'll receive your pocket hunter, especially if you buy it from the Pathfinder store. Now, let's talk about the concept of loading an arrow in here, and let's talk a little bit about this adapter and why this adapter is designed the way it is. All right, to truly understand this system you have to have a, a base knowledge of both how to shoot a slingshot as well as archery and that's the bottom line as far as the design and engineering of this part is it takes knowledge in both of those areas to be able to make something that's going to be effective on a slingshot for launching an arrow when we first started working on this and developing this I started out with just a key ring in between these two uprights there were two main design flaws or two major flaws with that system even though you could adapt it and shoot it pretty well it was not ideal I'm going to tell you why number one it's very hard to get that ring to be level or centered with these bands when you draw them back so your arrow was always either canted a little bit up or a little bit down depending on where you were at with that key ring and the uprights and how far it had slid up and down and things like that so that doesn't give you optimal consistency for aiming the device because it doesn't stay the same. There's no repeatability in that. The second problem with that is, is that most people who shoot slingshots will aim their slingshot off the upright. So this thing has to be able to be turned sideways in the hand when you're shooting it like this so that I can use the upright as an aiming device. Most people that shoot bows 
would be holding the bow like this in their hand. But a lot of people can't their bow anyway. And the can't is important with this device because you need to understand that if you're trying to aim the slingshot off your upright like you would a normal slingshot. You can shoot this instinctively like you would shoot a longbow or recurve bow as well, but if you're trying to aim, this cant is important. Most people tend to cant their bow or cant their slingshot when they shoot it, and that was the other design problem with the key ring in between here. Something had to attach that key ring to these uprights, generally a piece of rubber or a strap tie of some sort. Whatever it was, it was inside the key ring to wrap around and it created drag on the arrow or didn't let it rest directly in the center. It would be resting off to one side or resting off to the other side or it would drag when it went through, which throws your accuracy off. It also caused a deflection when it went through and that's a problem as well. Anything that deflects your arrow is going to make your arrow flight less accurate. At that point my father started to work on this design in 3D models and came up with the current attachment which we have a patent on for the slingshot that has now been licensed to Marksman for worldwide distribution. It's made out of one solid piece of ABS plastic excuse me two pieces of ABS plastic with the thumb screw to bolt it together and it has a solid device for your arrow to rest on and it doesn't matter what position you hold that slingshot in it's going to be on a nice flat rest you can hold it sideways straight up and down left-handed or right-handed it doesn't matter it's always going to lay in that rest exactly the same way now one thing that's important or two things that are important to understand when you're going to shoot arrows out of a slingshot a if you're trying to get maximum power from that slingshot you need a full length arrow because that arrow needs to be at least a length of draw that's the maximum for those bands. In this case, 28 inches gives you 42 pounds of draw. So if I pull these bands back 28 inches, that's going to give me 42 pounds of draw. If my arrow is not at least that long, it's going to slip through the rest. So it needs to be longer than that. A full length arrow is about 31 inches, and that's about what I would recommend. Don't ever shoot a crossbow bolt out of this thing unless you want to compromise A, safety, and B, accuracy, and C, power. The arrows that we sell, and you can, you can shoot any arrow out of this device, but any arrow that does not have feathered fletchings, if it has plastic veins, they're going to deflect off of this arrow rest, which is going to throw the accuracy of your arrow off. You need feathers that will compress when they go past that rest. So when they go through this rest, they will compress and there's no deflection. You have to have that for maximum accuracy. The arrows that we sell for this Pocket Hunter are made of the smallest diameter carbon that we could get. And the takedown portion of these arrows, which we'll talk about in a minute, is titanium, solid titanium. So you have a very lightweight arrow. The lighter weight your arrow is, the faster it's going to shoot. There is a 110 grain field point on most of the arrows that we sell, although we do sell broadheads and we do sell a fishing tip for these arrows as well. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes. The important part to understand is you need to have feathers on your arrow and you want to shoot the lightest arrow you can possibly find. Okay, so real quick, let's discuss bands for a minute, slingshot bands. As I said before, when you buy the Pocket Hunter, you receive a set of bands on the Pocket Hunter that are heavy duty hunting bands that are 42 pounds at 28 inches. These bands have been tested to be 42 pounds at 28 inches. We also sell a heavier hunting band that looks like this and you can see the diameter is much different and size is much different in this band. And these are 52, 53 pounds at 28 inches. So they're much heavier hunting style band made for larger game animals. All right, These cannot be bought anywhere except through the Pathfinder store. Replacement bands like this cannot be bought anywhere except through the Pathfinder store. When we licensed this Pocket Hunter to Marksman, they have only bought licensing for the attachment itself on their slingshot without the fishing attachment and no peripheral accessories or replacement parts. So all of those parts are only available currently at the Pathfinder store. 
these larger hunting bands are well worth the investment if you're trying to hunt bigger game. These will do you plenty if you're just trying to use this for small game or a backup hunting device. Okay, let's talk about arrows real quick. When you buy takedown arrows, and again, these are available only at the Pathfinder store. There are other takedown arrows available on the market or on other websites, but what I will tell you is this. We have spent the better part of three years developing these takedown arrows. They are the only takedown arrows like them on the market, and they are the most accurate with the least amount of run out on the market today. I feel very confident in telling you that these are the absolute best there is available. There is nothing else that comes close. This is, again, the lightest weight carbon shaft that you can possibly get for the diameter. The inserts that we use are solid titanium. When we first developed this product and I started working with takedown arrows, I started out by just taking an insert like you would put an arrow in, like this one, and putting one of them on each end of the arrow, similar to this, and then using all thread in another piece of this and epoxying it on one side and screwing it in. I started with steel, I went to aluminum. The problem with all of that stuff is what's called run out. And run out is how straight that arrow is for its overall length. Once you start screwing components together, that's when run out becomes a huge problem because now you've taken one piece, cut it into three, and you're trying to put it back together with a screwing device like this. And when you get it together, it may be like this, it may be like this, that's exaggerated, but it could just be a little bit off, but it throws the flight of that arrow off considerably with very little run out whatsoever. These titanium inserts are ultra lightweight. They're designed with a shoulder or a sleeve on them that automatically aligns both inserts when they're screwed together so that it causes near zero run out. And we have put these on run out machines and checked them. All right. You get three of these arrows, and that's part of the reason that these arrows are more expensive, is because all of the hardware on these arrows, the inserts and everything, and the end insert, they're all titanium. You get three of those arrows in a plastic tube that you can put in your backpack just like this. Three arrows come in this tube. Now, of course you guys know I'm all about multifunctionality. I'm all about can I use it for this, that, and the other thing. So I would not be satisfied with an arrow like this that could not be shot from any bow because that's the purpose of it. These are backup arrows and the Pocket Hunter was really designed to be a backup hunting tool to shoot arrows. I can shoot ball ammunition out of a slingshot and kill small game all day long with it. Squirrels, rabbits, and the like. But if I want to use that thing for fishing or if I want to use that thing to hunt medium-sized game, I really need to shoot arrows out of it. And to do that, I had to be able to make sure that any arrow I was going to use for my bow could be used with that slingshot and vice versa. This arrow has been shot out of a 60 pound compound bow multiple times to check for accuracy. I shoot these arrows out of my long bows consistently all of the time and I'll show you a demo on that here in just a few minutes. So when you buy arrows like this, you're not only buying an arrow for your slingshot, you're buying an arrow for your pocket hunter, you're buying an arrow that you can use with any bow you have. So you can put a couple, three tubes of these in your backpack and you have a very compact way of carrying the arrows for your possibly take down bow or your pocket hunter in your backpack as well. Okay, let's talk about broadheads for a minute because if you're going to hunt with this bow, obviously you can hunt small game with a, t a field tip just like this very easily. It's no problem. But if you're going to hunt medium sized type game, you're going to want a broadhead. We have a broadhead that is designed specifically for this arrow that we saw on our website. It is a 110 grain broadhead, the same weight exactly as the field point that's sold with it. It is a solid construction, three, three blade welded broadhead. This is not a collapsible, it's not an expandable. I don't believe in moving parts, I think they're a pain, and I don't think they're durable and they last. This tip will last you over and over and over again, and you can resharpen it. It's a solid steel construction, heavy duty, high carbon broadhead. Okay? We sell these as well in three packs, and the only place you can get this broadhead is through the Pathfinder website currently. So that's the broadhead for the takedown arrow for the pocket hunting system, but could also be shot out of any bow, including a compound bow. 
Very, very accurate, very durable, and they come in three packs just like the arrows do. Okay, let's talk about fishing tips real quick because we may want to hunt fish with our bow. We also have a specially designed screw-in, not glue-on, fishing tip that's barbed on both sides. Heavy steel construction. Works really, really well. It weighs a little bit more. You're going to sacrifice accuracy over distance, but you shouldn't be shooting fish more than about 10 or 12 feet. It's not going to matter at that point. You don't even need feathers on the arrow at that kind of a distance. So this is a very good hunting type head for fishing around the water's edge with your arrow. We sell this tip separately. We also sell it with a fishing arrow that we'll discuss in just a minute. Okay, let's talk real quick about the fishing arrow, and then we're going to get to the fun stuff and start shooting this dude. The fishing arrow that we sell is a three-piece takedown arrow, just like the others. It has a stop on it, made by AMS, that's made for fishing arrows. And you get all the pieces and parts that go with it. You're going to get the spool on cardboard of bank line with the arrow attachment on it. And what you'll do with that is you'll just remove it from the cardboard, and you will slide the arrow through the stop just like this. And that is designed to stop against the back of the arrow so that it pulls line off the spool after you shoot it. Once you've done that, you put your fishing tip back on the arrow. Then you have an attachment point or a, just a small swivel here. And that swivel gets attached directly to the bottom of the frame, just like this. And once you attach that to the frame, you cannot lose your arrow. you got plenty of line here, more than you really need. Like I said, most of the fishing that you're going to do is really going to take place very close up. Um, I've done bow fishing plenty of times, and I can tell you that most of your shots are going to be 10, 12 feet. Unless you're shooting at aerial targets like jumping carp or something like that, your shots are going to be very, very close. If you're trying to shoot large bullfrogs on the other edge of the creek bank or something like that, or you're trying to shoot carp or catfish or gar, you're going to get close shots. So you won't have to worry about being a million miles away and having that much string. And it comes on this cardboard just for your convenience, not because this is something meant permanently to wrap it around. So once you've taken all of that off, you'll take your line and run it out. And it's good to stretch this stuff out and get the kinks out of it anyway the first time you use it. And then we'll get our fishing attachment attached to the front and I'll show you how to set that whole thing up. Okay, like I said, all of this line can be stored inside this spool. That's why it has a cap on it so that when you put it in your kit you have a place to store. The caps are on there good. You have a place to store all of that gear, that line and this stopper and all of that stuff can just be stuffed down inside here. So to fish with this, we have to take the adapter off if we're using it as it comes. Now, like I said, it does not matter which way this adapter is on here to shoot any arrow. It doesn't matter if it's on there frontwards or backwards, it will still shoot an arrow, but it's totally reversible. So we'll put this thing on in the fishing configuration. And again, you know, this stuff is really easy on off Easy to take down, easy to put back together. It doesn't take a long time in the field to mess with this stuff. Then we attach our fishing attachment to the front. We attach our line to the frame, wherever we want to do that. You can do it on the side, you can do it on the bottom. It really doesn't matter. Then what you're going to do is you're going to loosely wrap this line on the spool, just like this. And it does not have to be wrapped on there tight. If you wrap it on there tight, it's going to tangle up on you a lot worse than if you wrap it on there loose. So you just wrap it around there. Just keep kind of going back and forth with it. And you can decide how much line you need. We give you plenty. Now, what's going to happen with this is when you load this and you draw it back, it's going to pull this insert or the stop backwards like this. When you shoot it and the arrow travels forward, this stop will catch, or this connector will catch on the stop back here, and that will remove line from the spool. Now you're not going to reel it in by trying to wrap around the spool. You're going to pull the fish in by hand, and then you're going to rewrap it, just like you would do if you were bow fishing with an open reel. 
Okay, so real quick before we shoot this slingshot, let's talk about loading this slingshot because that's a question I get a lot. What you're going to do is you're going to set the arrow in the rest. This string is designed to trap the knock, just like that. The knock goes into that string. And when you pull backwards on this system, it will lock it in place. It locks that knock into a V in that pocket so that it can't come out. It's trapped on a string and it's trapped by the pocket. Then when you release it and it comes forward, the pocket will open up and it will come off the string. And I'll show you that a little bit more when we're out shooting this thing. Okay, so let's talk about loading this slingshot in the field. What I generally do is I will put it right across the slingshot just like that. I'll bring my bands up, stretch them just a little bit and make sure that I'm locking into that string. And then I will let it slide forward and come up just like that. And if you hold that in place, when you pull back on the string, it's going to automatically lock that arrow in just like that. Now, you can shoot this thing two different ways. You can shoot it by holding on to the knot, and that's the way my father shoots it. Or you can take the string with two fingers like this, like you're shooting a bow. And it's exactly the same posturing as if you were shooting a bow. It's exactly the same, there is no difference. Anchor point and release. It's exactly the same. This arrow has been chronographed at 115 feet per second at a professional archery range. And there's the shot, and that was at about 12 yards. Okay, guys, I wanted to answer one more question real fast in this video. I've had a lot of guys say to me, you know, since I can't get the fishing spool attachment for the Pocket Hunter at Bass Pro or any place else when I buy it off the shelf, can I buy it from you as a separate component to put on the Pocket Hunter? And the answer to that is no. But I want to explain to you why the answer to that is no. It's not because we don't want to give you that attachment. What it boils down to is when we first created this, when my father designed this, we had this mold to make this plastic part and all of the injection process done in the United States, in Indianapolis, Indiana. All of our titanium inserts for our arrows are made in Indianapolis, Indiana, in a U.S. factory employing U.S. workers. And all of our assembly process to put this stuff together is done by U.S. workers in our store at the Pathfinder School in Indianapolis, Indiana, at the Pathfinder Store, excuse me. The school is in Ohio, the store is in Indianapolis. So, what that boils down to is, if you know anything about molding processes, I'll try to explain to you real fast, one mold may not match another mold exactly. So if our mold that was made in the U.S. does not match the mold that was made overseas by marksmen, and they're not making the spool in their mold, they're only making this portion, then our spool from our U.S. mold may not fit the overseas mold that marksmen made. The other question I get quite often about the pocket hunting system is, what is the maximum effective hunting range of that system? And for me, to be honest, I would say, 12 to 15 yards on medium size game and I would go inward from there to 10 yards for small game because I want to ensure my accuracy and the accuracy of this thing is about a pie plate at 15 yards so small game is smaller than a pie plate so I'm going to get a little closer There's no difference with the pocket hunter than there is with a bow. Everything is about consistency and repeatability. Same draw length, same anchor point, same release. Don't move the bow or the pocket hunter until the arrow has left the rest. Okay, folks, the other thing I want to do real quick, because we're featuring the three-piece takedown arrows in this video as well, and we talked about the ability to shoot these from a bow so that you don't have to buy two different types of arrows for your pocket hunter. These can be shot just as easily through your bow as they can the pocket hunter. And I've got my Pathfinder bow, Pathfinder longbow here by Two Tracks Bows 
out of Michigan. This bow is 50 pounds at 28 inches, so it's heavier than the Pocket Hunter. And I want to show you what the accuracy of these arrows are out of it. Take that shot every day. Nothing wrong with that shot. I thank you guys for joining me for this video today. I thank you for making the dream of the Pocket Hunter come true for myself, for my family, and for the Pathfinder store and Pathfinder School. I thank you for all your support over the years, for everything that you do for us, for my school, for my family, for all my instructors, supporters, and friends. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.